Hello everybody, my name is Sumandua. I'm a registered migration agent based in Brisbane, Australia. In this video today, I would like to give you some updates regarding Queensland's state nomination for subclass 190 and 491 visa. As you all are aware that they recently opened from 29th of September to 5th of October 2020 and they received more than 3,000 applications during that time. So BSMQ has advised that they are still assessing those applications and they still have about 800 EOIs that they will be assessing. So Queensland State Nomination Team is waiting for their um, allocation for the remaining financial year for both subclasses 190 and 491 visa. So once they receive the allocation, there is a possibility that those EUIs that were submitted during the time they were open, which is from 29th of September to 5th of October, they may still start getting invites as soon as they get their allocation from the department. Um, also, they have advised that they may reopen either later December or maybe in January. However, the date is unknown because they haven't received the allocation from the Department of Home Affairs yet. Based on the invites that we have received, it looks like that only those applicants who had six months of work experience and a 12 months job of letter were invited for 190 or 491 visa subclasses. Also, when they opened last time, they did not mention about any waivers for the master's or PhD graduates. Uh, usually with master's uh, graduates, they do not need to meet that six months work experience requirement. But when they opened last time, they still wanted the six months work experience from all their applicants. When they will open again, uh, maybe December or January, whenever they get their um, allocation and the new quota, they may impose the same requirements which is that you need to have six months of work experience and a 12 months job of a letter if you wish to apply for their nomination. So when they reopen again they may ask the applicants to email uh, the state again with the submission that why they think that they are a critical worker and should be invited for the 190 or 491 visa. When they will reopen again and if they will invite applicants who are Section 48 barred, I think it will depend on the travel restrictions uh, in the country at that time. So if the travel restrictions are still there, so there is a possibility that they may still not invite applicants who are Section 48 barred. Along with this, there has also been some recent updates regarding the 491 small business owner stream. So with this video, I also want to give you some more information about the 491 small business owner stream. We have made a video about the 491 SBO stream in the past. We will put the link in the description. However, there have been some changes. So um, you can download my free PDF guide as well for the small business owner stream. I will put it in, uh, in the description as well. But also please note these updates that we have received from BSMQ. Now the first update has been in regards to who you can employ in your business. So in the past when they introduced this stream, they said you can actually employ anybody. It could be a student visa holder or a 485 visa holder and you have to employ um, one employee for minimum of 20 hours a week. But uh, because then COVID-19 happened as well and they made some changes and uh, they announced that the employee that you're going to hire in your business needs to be an Australian citizen or a permanent resident or an eligible New Zealand citizen. So this has been a recent update as well. So if you're running a business and you wish to apply for 491 small business owner stream, uh, please make sure that you have hired at least one um, Australian resident who meets this definition. Also, the second update they have given is in regards to the franchises. So um, if you are somebody who's looking for a business in Queensland, you might have been approached by many franchises who might have offered you to open a new franchise in the regional Queensland. However, it will not be accepted by the state because what they want is that the business needs to be already running for 12 months in regional Queensland before you purchase it. So just be very careful. If you're looking at a new franchise, um, they will not be accepting it. Another update they have given is that if you are looking at a business to purchase, please make sure that the business has been running for at least 12 months. 
Previously, they had listed on their website that if it's a franchise, then only it needs to be running for 12 months. But now they have updated. So if it's a franchise or a private business that you're buying, all businesses need to be running for a minimum of 12 months before you plan to purchase them. There has also been some confusion regarding what can and what cannot be included in the investment. So they have clarified on that as well. So you can include the purchase of the business and you can also include the stocks that is part of your purchase contract. So basically the stock that you purchased when you signed the purchase contract and it's included in the purchase contract. You can also include the equipment and machinery, any vehicles that you have purchased as part of the business. So you can also include the renovations that you would have done on the business as long as you have done the renovations before putting your expression of interest. You cannot include the ongoing operating costs of the business, for example, the rent, the salaries or the marketing um, that you are doing for your business. Also, you cannot include the bank guarantee, the insurance costs, the stock take charge or any stock that you would have purchased after your initial purchase contract. They have also put some case studies on the website, which I will be talking about as well in this video. So the first case study is about a petrol station because there are a lot of people who are buying petrol stations where they are not the direct franchisee. So maybe, you know, they could be the commission agent or something like that. So that is actually not acceptable. And they have actually put a case study as well regarding that on their website. So uh, the first case study that they have put is about the petrol station and it says Gurpreet would like to purchase a lease of a petrol station in Mount Isa from the current franchisee holder for a period of five years for $120,000 and pay this off over the period. Would this meet 491 SBO requirements? Now they have put an answer in there. It says no, it would not. Gurpreet would, not, would need to be the 100% owner of the business and direct franchisee to meet requirements. He would also need to invest a minimum of at least 100,000 before submitting an EOI. Investment over a five year period would not be acceptable. So all those people who are planning to buy petrol stations where they are not the direct franchisee, they will not be acceptable by uh, by the Queensland by Queensland for 491 SBO stream. So just be careful with that one. The ca second case study is about a courier business. Ming would like to purchase a courier business and the cost of the business is 70,000. The courier van is included separately in the purchase contract as stock at a cost of 40,000. He conducts all his business from his van. Would this meet 491 small business owner pathway requirements? So this is also a very interesting uh, case that they have put because a lot of applicants are looking at buying the courier business as well. So they have actually uh, clarified this as well. And the total investment into the business is 110,000 because he paid 70,000 for the business and 40,000 for the van. So it's a total of 110,000. Therefore, the minimum investment amount would meet the 491 SBO requirements. As all of his business is conducted from his van, he does not need a separate commercial premise and this would not be considered as home-based business. Therefore, this would also meet the requirements. So the next case study I've got here is regarding a restaurant business. So Thi would like to purchase a Vietnamese restaurant for 80,000. She would then like to renovate and fit out the shop and invest another 50,000. Would this meet 491 SBO requirements? Yes, it would. Renovations should be considered as a capital investment and can be included in the total investment cost. She would need to complete the renovations in the six months period prior to submitting an EOI. So the next case study I've got is regarding a franchise business. So Gustavo would like to purchase a franchise mowing business in Noosa on the Sunshine Coast, which has been in operation for two months. Would this meet 491 SBO requirements? No, it would not. So obviously because the business has been running for two months and the minimum requirement is that any business you purchase, including a franchise or a private business, needs to be running for a minimum of 12 months. 
So these are the few updates um, that are available on BSMQ's website as well regarding the 491 SPO stream. So we have made videos about the 190491 stream from BSMQ and we've also made a video about the 491 small business owner stream. So we will put the link in the description. So at the end of those videos, you will also have a free uh, PDF guide that you can download to understand the requirements uh, of BSMQ. But please note that those are the were the requirements when uh, you know the COVID did not occur. But right now there is a possibility that they may only stick to critical workers and they may come up with new requirements or a new occupation list. So if you are somebody who's looking for the state nomination for 190491, from Queensland, please get in touch with us. We'll be happy to help you with your application. To stay updated about Australia's immigration, make sure that you subscribe to our channel.